A huge human-shaped cocoon is weirdly twisting, along with the sound of rapid and coarse gasping. A mouth bit through the remnants of the cocoon. The face of a woman gradually revealed. Her fingers break out of the cocoon and tear open the membrane that wraps around her body. She finds her body covered with syringes, but she doesn't remember anything. She stubbornly looks around and finds herself in a small compartment. The woman pulled the syringe out of her arm and went to desperately slap on the hatch and shouted for help. At that moment, the cabin lights turned on and a mechanical voice sounded in the cabin. It was the cabin's computer above her Milo. Milo reminded her that the oxygen level in the cabin was low. While she was talking to Milo, she had a mental image of the hospital resuscitation room. She thought she was still in the hospital and called out for help again. But the response was still the cold sound of the machine. She tried to ask Milo to open the hatch for her, but Milo refused because she didn't have enough authority. Then she asked Milo to dial the police. This time she succeeded. She told the police that she was being buried alive in the hatch and needed help. But when the police asked who she was, she couldn't answer. The woman who couldn't remember her name had to rely on the police to locate Milo to find her. But the police call was disconnected due to a weak communication signal on her end. She takes a deep breath and tries to get Milo to look up her body information. Then she learns that her name is Elizabeth and she is a renowned cryonics doctor. She has won numerous awards, so who put her in here? Then she asked Milo to call the police again, and eagerly gave the police her name. She passed on the information she had found about the hatch. But if the police wanted to get access to the cabin, it would take some time, and the oxygen level in the cabin was only 26%. Elizabeth broke down. She cried and pounded on the hatch, and the pain brought back some of her memories. She was married and had a husband. Leo, Elizabeth was grateful and asked Milo to call her husband's number. However, the first call to him was a dead number. His second call was answered by the voice of a girl. She didn't know who the girl on the other end of the line was. She just quickly told the other party that she was looking for, Leo. But as soon as she finished speaking, the phone was hung up. Elizabeth didn't want to give up and asked Milo to call again. The girl answered the phone again, but she hung up on Elizabeth decisively. At this time, the oxygen level in the cabin was only 20%. At that moment, the police called. They said that Elizabeth's identity was correct, but the model of the capsule Elizabeth provided was destroyed three years ago. They are searching for Elizabeth and want her to stay calm. The woman wakes up in a dormant capsule. Her body is immobilized and she can move. The robot arm wields a needle point and stabs her heart in the face. In the nick of time, Elizabeth turns to the side. Then the needle tip missed. Milo, the computer butler in the capsule, warned her that if her heart rate was too fast, she would lose oxygen faster. At that moment, Milo received a call from the police. He said that Elizabeth was a renowned doctor of memory replication research. They have a lock on her location and are on their way to rescue her. Elizabeth wasn't happy for three seconds. The oxygen level next to her gave another warning. At this point, the oxygen level in the capsule was down to 17%. Elizabeth stabbed the tip of a needle into the palm of her hand to stay awake. As the blood flowed instantly, memories of her husband reappeared in her mind. She told the police that if they found her husband, they would know why she was being held here. But the police on the other end of the line said that Elizabeth was never married. Those images were just a figment of her imagination. They told her to stay calm and wait for help. But Elizabeth heard a third person's voice on the phone between the two of them. It turns out the police weren't trying to save Elizabeth. They were just stalling for time. When the oxygen in the capsule runs out, the computer butler, Milo, will euthanize Elizabeth forcibly? Elizabeth could not accept her imminent death and angrily told Milo to hang up the phone. It was up to her to find a place to escape. Elizabeth took the tip of the needle and slashed it hard into the crack of the hatch. Sensing the forced destruction of the hatch, Milo activated his self-protection mechanism. It then electrocuted Elizabeth. It was this shock that caused the fragmented memories in Elizabeth's mind to begin to come together. She remembered more and was certain that her husband's name was Leo. Elizabeth scraped the capsule again with the tip of a needle in order to remember more. A jolt of electricity struck her instantly. As her memory slowly returned, the call came again. This time, it was an old female voice. She said it wasn't that the police didn't want to save Elizabeth, but that Elizabeth was on a special mission. Because Elizabeth was no longer on Earth, but was lying in a space station in the universe. The police kept her calm and said that her memories were also hallucinations for fear that she would reveal the mission and that her husband Leo had died. Elizabeth does not believe the woman. 
She threatens the woman with the password to the capsule, but the woman adjusts the gravity data of the capsule in her capacity as administrator. Then Elizabeth instantly floats in the air. Elizabeth is now convinced that she is in a space without gravity. The oxygen level in the capsule was now only 8%. Elizabeth pressed hard on her wounds and tried to recover more of her memories. So she asked Milo to play her image again. This time the image of Dr. Elizabeth was no longer her young self, but an old woman with white hair. Elizabeth was confused. Who was she? Whose memories are hers? Everyone here wore masks and had black spots all over their bodies. As the man coughed softly, a pool of blood appeared in the mask. The lights in the emergency room never go out. All humans on Earth are infected with a terrible bacteria. Scientists calculate that humans will not live more than two generations under the influence of this bacteria in order for the human race to continue to reproduce. The government worked with scientists on an experiment. They cloned countless humans and imported their memories. They then put the clones on a space station and sent them to another planet, but the station was hit by an asteroid during its operation. The capsule Elizabeth was sleeping in was broken by the heat sensor, so she woke up with heat. She looked at the data screen played by the computer butler and realized that she was just a clone. That had taken over the memories of a doctor. Elizabeth had a hard time accepting her identity. The oxygen level in the capsule was only 3%, so she made a bold decision. She ordered the computer butler Milo to open the capsule's perspective function. Elizabeth, who had been sleeping in the capsule since birth, wanted to take a last look at the outside world. But as soon as Milo turned on the perspective function, one after another clone's body appeared in front of her eyes instantly. Countless metal capsules are floating in the universe in a dense distribution that were carrying the hopes of countless earthlings towards a planet 14 light years away. At that moment, she remembered the words of her husband Leo before he died. We will meet again. Elizabeth thought of this and immediately asked Milo to call up the number of her clone husband from her memory. Fortunately, her husband's capsule had not been hit, so it was sleeping just fine. Elizabeth didn't want to die because she had found a reason to live, but the oxygen level in the capsule was already only 1%. Cryogenics requires to percent oxygen to revive a human body. Elizabeth thinks about the impacted capsule. She asks Milo if it can transport the oxygen from those capsules to her. Milo said it could try to do this, but it would take some time. If Elizabeth chose to sleep now, then anything would be possible. So Elizabeth calmed down and listened to Milo. She reinserted the nutrition catheter and let the Milo wrapper into a chrysalis again. The oxygen in the capsule has just been depleted. At the end of the film, the clones Elizabeth and her husband Leo survive on a planet 14 light years away from Earth. They represent the hope of the Earth and a new life and beginning. Humans will abandon Earth in the event of a disaster to find a new planet. But no matter what, we will never be passive in the face of disaster. We must always be in awe and hope for the future. We can only have a future if we don't give up.